really was one of those hearings that you just can't believe they're continuing to stick by what is the word incredible technically means no credibility. They have no credibility on Fast and Furious. They've covered up, they've slow rolled, and they've given us false statements. And yesterday it came out exactly how false they were. You know, you can hear about it, but until you see it for yourself... I mean, what a contrast. There you have these shocking firsthand accounts from the agents who backed up what was revealed in those emails you just released. You know, that ATF's Bill Newell, they mentioned him, George Gillette, were briefed weekly about the operation. Then you had acting director Ken Melson not only knowing but watching a live feed about, you know, these straw purchasers buying guns. And then you there you have Ronald Weich sent up there by the DOJ, unable, refusing to answer the questions you want to answer. So what's it going to take to get George Gillette and Bill Newell and Ken Melson up there to testify before your committee? Well, one of the rules that we have is that we go vertical. Uh, we, we start at the bottom and we work up whenever possible. So earlier today I was asked, you're going to have Eric Holder there. And the answer is Eric Holder comes last. Uh, we, are, we are going to continue to work with whistleblowers, and we're going to continue to go through the chain of people who knew or should have known or we believe knew and get their testimonies. Uh, we know it gets all the way to the top. We want to do our investigation the right way. We're hoping that somewhere along the way the president will realize that cutting his losses, make, holding those people accountable that allowed this program, encouraged this program, funded this program, to pay the price of losing their jobs. And these are political appointees for the most part. And, you know, I'm obviously a political animal, but I think the important thing for your listeners to understand is the last administration fired uh, U.S. Attorney Carol Lamb because she wouldn't enforce drug and, or sorry, I apologize, gun violations at the border. It was the number one reason she was fired, and they told her, and she just wouldn't do it. She said they, they didn't have enough penalties in California. Here in, there in Arizona, you had somebody who refused to prosecute these and went mm-hmm. further, organized a, an operation that put 2,500 more deadly weapons in the hands of criminals. Yes. And do you think by the time this is over, there will be some heads rolling, some firings? There absolutely has to be. We cannot let go of this. The, uh, the citizens can't let go of this. This is an administration that continues to talk about reinstituting an, an assault weapon ban. And the first ban should be on federal agents promoting assault weapons getting in the hands of known bad people. That's exactly where the NRA and the gun, uh, anti-gun groups agree. Bad people shouldn't get guns. This administration gave the worst people 2,500 weapons, and that has to be absolutely be paid for with kinds of firings, and if necessary, even prosecution. Mm -hmm. And how about some of those members yesterday of the committee trying to use this hearing to advance their own gun control agenda? You had Congressman Turney talking about, you know, the need for reporting multiple sales of long guns. And then you had uh, Carolyn Maloney bringing up the whole issue of, you know, toothless gun laws. Well, obviously they had an agenda. Perhaps the administration's agenda was that this collateral damage, as they obviously thought it would be, uh, in fact, serve their agenda. But it's very clear that they're still trying to promote one thing using anyone, including Brian Terry's uh, now dead body. And it was the Mm. worst I'd ever seen in Congress, that kind of opportunism, uh, and of course, inappropriate opportunism, since the system worked, they were reporting to the ATF The ATF wasn't just not doing their job. They were ordered to do the wrong thing. You know, and Senator Grassley made an interesting point that really struck me yesterday when he was testifying about how 70 percent of all the guns were bought by just five straw purchasers. And as he said, if the agents had been allowed to stop those guys, most of the guns in, in this case wouldn't have fallen into the wrong hands. And I was thinking, you know, I've interviewed some members of the cartel And maybe if they had made these arrests and gone to interview these guys, they would have been able to bust the major drug cartel as they claim their their purpose is. Exactly. They could have rolled up countless bad people up the line if they'd been allowed to do their job the way they normally do, which is they follow the gun from one location to the other, and if they're in danger of losing track of the weapon or weapons, then they go ahead and apprehend and try to flip 
the, the perpetrator. And they had plenty of opportunities that were deliberately missed. And I think the important thing is NRA members absolutely are in it with the rest of us, and I'm a member, to, uh, uh, to make sure that guns don't get, end up in the wrong people's hands. That's what gun safety programs are. That's what all of these things are about. And uh, this is an administration that came with an agenda. They did something incredibly bad. It happens to help their agenda unless we push back hard and make it very clear. And I will mention one other thing. Elijah Cummings, the ranking member, in addition to their trying to defend the administration, they asked for a separate, what they call a minority hearing, on exactly what you're talking about, quote, the gun control issue and the issue of weapons going to Mexico, in spite of the fact that these weapons were promoted by the administration to go to Mexico. And it was just so blatant. I mean, it, was, it, it really was. And I can only imagine what the Terry family must have been thinking listening to these agents and and then hearing this kind of, of a banter back and forth what they must have been thinking about how brian took such pride in what he was doing Absolutely. cared so much for this country and obviously the people that he worked for didn't have that same feeling no they didn't and when i as some might say went off on on ron i did so on the justice department representative ron weiss i did so for many good reasons but the best reason was Brian Terry's mother and sister and cousin were sitting in the ante room looking at television, having given their testimony, and they were going to see whether I put up with this kind of lying right in our faces and distorting all the realities that everyone knew. And I could not let that go without being knocked down and knocked down hard. Uh, this, this is Congress, and the administration should be ashamed of what they did. Uh, yesterday trying to continue to stick by a incredible story uh, and they will they're going to continue until ultimately uh, they realize that it is politically dangerous for them to continue being behind a program that killed Americans and Mexicans yes and there was I understand a lot of Mexican media there so this administration needs to be concerned for a lot of reasons there absolutely and I'm going to Mexico I'm leading a large delegation next week we're going to Mexico City we will be meeting with our partners in the drug war there, the Attorney General and others, because they don't trust this administration. We've got to get that trust back. We've got to have them helping us uh, with our border relationship and certainly with heroin and, other, and cocaine and other drugs going across the border. Uh, I should not have to make that trip, but I think without some re restoring of credibility that we will get to the bottom of this, we're not going to get the cooperation from this government we need. And you made it clear. You told Mr. White, we are investigating you, the executive branch. Don't doubt it. Absolutely. You know, the, the people that were straw buyers, I'd like to see them serve whatever their, their sentence would be. But they're fairly de minimis crimes. The big issue, and, and it was said by his cousin, uh, the, the Secret Serviceman, yesterday, uh, they want to make sure the dragnet catches people for the killing of Brian Terry which includes some of these traffickers, none of whom are charged at this time. Mm -hmm. You know, and you've got an administration. They pride themselves on openness, on transparency. And as you said, all they do is supply you with these redacted documents. People who come up to the Hill can't answer your questions, can't tell you, you know, what they know about what. And, and you know, the more they do this, the less they respond and deal with it the more they really do look like, as you said, they're lying. They have something to hide. Absolutely. And one of the challenges we face with this administration is they want to say they're for transparency. They've forgotten the most basic part of government, which is justice delayed is justice denied. To say that they're looking into something and the months and months go by and it's opaque means that transparency in this case delayed is transparency denied. Mm -hmm. And it was very troubling. Mr. Weiss couldn't even answer confidently that this operation, this strategy, isn't in play anymore. He couldn't even answer that question. Yeah, he very clearly couldn't. And, and the 22-year-old uh, the uh, document that they relied on saying, we've let guns walk before, here's the paper, uh, that paper is still in effect. They may, in fact, still be allowing guns to walk. Some program like this may still be going on, wow. and certainly the people who authorized it are still in their positions and still could authorize it. So you see more hearings coming? We do. We're, 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 our investigators are still deployed. They will continue to work on this. I tell people all the time, I want my people working on, most importantly, saving uh, the money of the taxpayer. 
but if there's constitutional challenges or there's challenges to the safety of Americans, I have to preempt even trying to save Americans' money. So my investigators in many cases are not looking for waste and fraud in government. They're looking for the perpetrators of these kinds of crimes. And just like the agent said, you know, the, uh, they work with these gun dealers, and I'm sure they're also concerned, you know, what, what, what this is going to mean to them in the long run, their reputation. I mean, they were painted as bad guys when they weren't the bad guy at all. Absolutely. And we all know there are gun dealers who are second rate. These were not second rate. These were people who only became part of the program because they reported what they believed to be straw purchases. They cooperated. They put cameras in their store, yes. which is a big thing to ask them to do. They did it. They did everything they could to help catch these straw buyers. And then initially, ATF and the Justice Department tried to blame them. The only good news is, like I hate to say it, but smart whistleblowers, they had facts. They had paper. They had evidence that, in fact, they were ordered to do this and did it as good Americans. And I know you've talked about contempt proceedings. you think you're going to be pushed to do that? Well, I already have contempt for the way the administration is dealing. Uh, but actually bringing it to the House floor right now, as long as whistleblowers keep coming forward, as long as we're getting information and we can proceed, I'm going to do that. But this administration has to realize that yesterday was only the beginning of turning up mm -hmm. the heat on him.